Uncle Zach in the studio tonight, and Zachary, and Hillary, and Joel, and Mary Stewart. I know that it means so much to Zach that you guys are here tonight. It's unusual that a school would induct someone who didn't play or coach for that school into its circle of honor. But nothing about Zach Young is usual. <clears throat> it's true, he never wore a Wesleyan jersey. Well, as far as I know, anyway, I guess I should have asked you to confirm that. <laughs> he never coached a Wesleyan team. Yet no one person is more responsible for the extraordinary success of Wesleyan's athletic program than Zach Young. He was unquestionably Wesleyan's greatest advocate. His fingerprints are on each and every program. His vision and steadfast desire for the Christian mission to be furthered through the athletic program laid the foundation for all that we have accomplished. His influence goes well beyond the innumerable innumerable number of region championships we have won. It goes well beyond the 42 state championships we won during his tenure as headmaster. His legacy will be his presence at games that started early and games that ended well into the night. He went to events that no one else would go to. He drove all over the state eating onion dip and listening to sermons on tape. In the words of longtime friend Matt Cole, I have been to funerals that were more joyous occasions than a ride home with Jack, Zach Young after a Wesleyan football loss. <laughs> no one has supported our programs the way he did. I've been to the state cross country meet over a dozen times. Only once have I seen another headmaster in attendance. Same with the state swim meet. And to the best of my knowledge, he's never missed either. Not only that, I think I know three people who could score a cross-country meet in their head as it is being run, and I suspect he's the fourth. I know I have to wait for the official results. It didn't matter the sport. If Wesleyan was playing, he was there. I'm never even sure if he went home some nights. No one can count the number of emails he sent to students encouraging them to do their best, to break a record, or just to participate. No one can count the number of lunchtime conversations he had about a previous game or about upcoming games. When Zach announced his retirement, the celebrations and ceremonies honoring him were grand. He had a full night in his honor, a t-shirt made in his likeness, and received countless letters of appreciation. But one gift stood taller than all the others. It was presented in front of a small group of administrators, and despite the magnanimity and festivity of the aforementioned celebrations, this gift was the present he cherished most. What was it? A GHSA lifetime pass. <laughs> All the sporting events you can stand for the rest of your natural life. I suspect right now he has two things in his wallet, his driver's license and that GHSA lifetime pass. <laughs> I'd like to share a few quotations from some of our coaches. In the interest of time, I can't share everything, but I think the following words paint a pretty accurate picture. At times, it seemed as though there must have been multiple Zach Youngs because he seemed to be present at events occurring simultaneously. He is a man of word and deed. He always said, keep the main thing, the main thing, and the main thing was always Jesus. He took the time to get to know me as a person, not just as an employee. I always knew who was running the ship, but he made me feel invested in the school as a whole. It really makes my day to see him in the stands at softball and basketball. Over 20 years ago, Zach asked me to work a few hours a week to get our fledgling varsity sports program off the ground. I soon realized that a few meant 50 hours a week to him. I reluctantly agreed to transition from parent to employee. I honestly did it because I was so grateful to Zach for his determination to make Wesley a first-class school, and I wanted to help. I have never regretted that decision. He always had a way of letting you know he was there to support you. Whether it was his detailed questioning the upcoming season, his interest in each player, or the fact that he was always cheering on the Wolves. The fact that our girls chose to dedicate our last state championship to him was a testimony to how they viewed his investment in them as individuals. Showing up makes a statement in and of itself. But from that point on, he cheers for every athlete in the competition by name and then scores the meet by scrawling down individual places on a business card and then checking it against the official score when the results are posted. He's a true fan of the sport. Zach has encouraged me as a coach, given me every opportunity to succeed at Wesleyan, stood by me in difficult times, and consistently upheld the mission of the school and that of Jesus Christ. And for that, I am forever grateful. Wesleyan Athletics would not be where it is today without the leadership, influence, and investment of Zach Young. Zach always had the highest of standards, and his focus 
on excellence is evident in Wesleyan's athletic program. I still picture him in the 2004 Red Girls Basketball State Championship visor, walking around the cross-country trail, tripping, clipping branches so runners wouldn't be impeded during the race. Zach is a one of a kind. The thing that stands out to me most about Zach is how much he cared for the entire Wesleyan community. He showed up for everything. Sometimes he even sat on our bench and ate our goldfish snacks. The response to my request for, for inputs far exceeded, exceeded what I could share tonight. And since brevity is the soul of wit, I'll stop here. His life work is almost complete. Wesleyan won a state football championship, and finally, a student athlete from Wesleyan will matriculate at Mr. Jefferson's University. There's only one thing left, for his grandchildren to wear green and gold. That would really make him proud. Hillary and Mary Stewart, I hope you're listening. <laughs> a prospective employee once asked Zach what it was like to work for him. He paused because he had never been asked that question before. He sat back in his chair and he responded, I am easily pleased by perfection. <laughs> True words were never spoken. <laughs> Please join me in congratulating Headmaster Emeritus Zach Young on his induction into the circle of honor. Michelle and Chris 
could have sent him anywhere in Atlanta to school, but they sent him to Westland for 14 years, a lot of it in trailers. And they stayed despite the fact that we did not at first accept India who came after him because she wouldn't talk to the people who were interviewing <laughs> Tanner was at Woodward Academy through the eighth grade and competed against us in all the middle school sports, football, basketball, and baseball. He came here mostly because it was so much closer to home in Alpharetta, at least I think that's the reason. We never have had many transfers from Woodward that late and certainly not one who was the star of the three major sports at the time. I believe we played you in the last game that you ever played at Woodward in the baseball championship game that I think we won. <laughs> Devin came over from Parkview in the 10th grade. He may have been the only transfer from a public school perennial athletic power we've ever had at Westland. The first semester for him here was like he had landed on the moon. <laughs> so great were the changes in rules and the whole school atmosphere. Mark, being the dean of students at the time, was in large part the reason he persevered. And he survived and persevered that first year and eventually thrived and excelled is truly a miracle. Actually, when you look at it from 30,000 feet, I think Devin was God's way of replacing Zach Johnston, who moved to Covington after his sophomore year. What a downer that was. <laughs> One <laughs> I have very special memories of each of these guys representing Wesley. And I also have specific memories of all of their families, too. It's so great to see you here today, Craig. You look better than you did when Tanner was playing for us. Michelle, you were the first person to start asking me how long I was going to do this. <laughs> Michelle, when we would sit at baseball games together, she, she started, I think, when uh, Connor was a sophomore. And she said, how much longer are you going to do? I was like, Michelle, I don't know. <laughs> I, or, I don't know. <laughs> and finally, I started thinking about it. How much longer am I going to do? <laughs> Connor's return from his football ACL tear 
to play baseball the same year, his senior year, made him, in my mind, a lock for Circle of Honor, even if he hadn't done all the other things that he did. So, with all those memories of heroic players in mind, this particular recognition is for a guy who was just a fan. Someone who never played a game for Wesleyan, but who was just there, cheering with all the moms and dads. So, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Carol Crichton, whose quote was, she's not here, but one of those was her quote. I, can, I know. Thank you, Lacey. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Jan, who's not here. Thank you, Stu. Thank you, Jesus. As Robert Duvall, as Texas Ranger Augustus McCray famously said in his last scene from Lonesome Dove, we had a hell of a ride, didn't we, Woodrow? <laughs>